Where are the Indians? It was an innocent enough question to my dad when I was about seven or eight. Each day on my way to school, I walked by a country store that had Indian sweaters hanging in the windows. When I went to buy penny candy, more sweaters lined the walls along with other artifacts. This was the original Hill store selling Cowichan sweaters in Coke's Island, in the Cowichan Valley, overseen by Mount Suhalem. In my one-room schoolhouse, six grades were taught. A furnace in the middle of the room heated us, even if unevenly, and there were non-flushing toilets in the basement until the PTA pushed through to get us hooked up. The big guys ruled the little guys in the playground. Although we played cowboys and Indians, among our ragtime country group, there were no Indians in our classroom. That little school has been designated a heritage site to honor the white man's past in Pope's Island. The Cowichan Indian sweaters were taken to Victoria, still under the banner of Hill's Family Store, as a tribute to the Cowichan Indians for their skills and have become famous far afield. My dad had heard the question, so one day driving down a gravel road, he pointed to some cabins surrounded by a barbed wire fence and pointed out the wool caught in the barbs. There were not any Indians to be seen, but the wool source was apparent walking around in the enclosure. Another time we were coming off the highway onto a country road when we saw what looked like a pile of blankets on the side of the road. On a closer look, it was a woman who had fallen down, so my dad got out to see what help she needed. She was conscious and could get up, so it was decided that we would drive her home. When the strong stench of urine came in with her, I saw my mom wrinkle her nose and ask if this was a good idea. I was pulled into the front seat and she was helped into the back seat of the car. Arriving at her house, I mean shed, I can remember feeling bad. It was rough and rickety. Coxilla was a small place. A sawmill, two general stores, a school, and a cluster of houses around the bulb farm where we lived. But her house was way below any standard set. Returning from her place, my dad said he was going to call the authorities to go check on her when we got to the when we got to a home. It is only years later that I realized that my kids, that kids my age, were sent to residential schools leaving their families without their children in perpetual mourning. The last residential school was closed as late as, I can't remember, I think it was 1984. Yeah. 76 or 84. Was it yeah, it was, it was in the, I think it was 80-something. Oh my God. Mm. It was in high school in Salmon Arm that one representative of the Indian nation turned up in our classroom. Harold was a funny guy, and although in general program, he had to have some smarts because despite lost times out and about, he graduated with us. I don't know how he did it, but there he was, marching across the stage with the rest of us. We were told that he was the first Indian to graduate from high school in British Columbia. Five chiefs in full attire turned up. And we all stood up and had a moment together. 1963. 2017. Where are the Indians? Last week in Whitehorse, friends and families of missing relatives gathered at a government hearing to ask the question, where are our Indians? Especially where are the ones who are missing, disappeared, on what is now called the Highway of Death? Why is there a poor bus service along this northern route? This is being asked in the context of the larger discussion on colonialization and prejudice. These are real people that have gone missing. Where are the Indians? Two weeks ago, a small group of coastal First Nation Representatives marched from Victoria to Kinder Morgan's site in Burnaby. 
a small group of my friends and me from the Unitarian Environmental Club joined them for the last six kilometers of the march. I'm glad to say that I took my drum because it was the communal drumming that helped us move along the hot pavement that day. Some facts that were revealed to me was that it was safer to move crude oil in rail cars or trucks than by pipeline. I didn't know that. And that is because there are two substances that are added to crude oil to make it go through the pipes. And it's those two substances that cannot be cleared up, cannot be corrected. So what these people are doing is asking us to think. These are people who take the job of being custodians of the earth to heart. These voices that know that destroying the habitat kills those that are dependent on the habitat, and one day that will be you, me, and our children. Then the question will be, where are the people? <laughs>